Hello, beautiful internet family. My name is Dan Davis, and I'm the creative director here at danstube.tv, as well as the Fearless Drone Academy, which is the ultimate online drone course for beginners. And today I'm very, very excited to finally be testing out the DJI Mini 3 Pro Active Track Modes. So the actual mode is called focus track, but I'm gonna be testing out active track, spotlight and point of interest. So those three modes are the modes that come underneath this focus track mode that they like to call it. Really interesting to see how these three modes performed. The weather was terrible, so I had very low visibility. It was like raining on and off. So there was a time when I went out, flew the drone, it started just hammering down. So I had to land the drone come back inside and then wait until the rain disappeared. So I had a very small window here, but I wanted to test this out and get this up so you guys can see how well the tracking modes work on the DJI Mini 3 Pro. Just quickly before I move on with this review, I do have some really exciting bundles, some drone bundles over on the D1 Stores website. Now these are exclusive Dan's Tube drone bundles. So make sure to use the link in the description below to go and check those out. There are some really cool deals over there. And if you do want to unlock some special pricing options, then you just have to contact sales at d1store.com.au. You can get your hands on a Mini 3 Pro once they come in stock and you can save some decent money over there. So make sure to check out those bundles and contact them via email if you want to see what else they can do for you. Just make sure to mention Dan's Tube as you email them. The first thing I wanted to quickly mention is that the screen recording here was actually captured on the new controller. So this was captured on the DJI RC. I just chucked in a micro SD card and used the inbuilt screen recording feature. Now I will say that the quality isn't amazing from that inbuilt screen recording option. I prefer the quality from my iPhone XS Max when I record the screen and then upload that. And you can see the comparison, you can see the difference in the quality. So I wish that the quality was a little better for that screen recording. That's just for me as a content creator, but I'm sure there's a lot of other people out there that wanted to use that inbuilt screen recording. So this gives you an example of what the quality will look like from the inbuilt screen recording functionality of the DJI RC. Now moving on to the focus track modes, I was really excited to see how well the three modes performed here. Now, Spotlight is one of those modes that's actually really interesting to me. I love the concept of it because once you've selected the subject, you as the pilot then have full control. So you can fly backwards and upwards and off to the left. You can have full control of the drone, but it's gonna be maintaining that focus point. So it's maintaining the spotlight of whatever it is that it's tracking. Now this mode is really unique and gives you a lot of, I guess, control as the drone pilot. And I found the spotlight mode worked really well here. I did also test out the subject scanning here. And basically what that does is it pops up with a plus over something that the drone can track, whether it's a bike, a person, a car, a boat, whatever that may be. I found that to be the easiest thing to set up because if you draw around something and it doesn't recognize it as one of those objects that it can actually use active track on, then it just won't let you use active track. So I find that setting up that subject scanning, clicking the plus, it then enables the full tracking mode so that you can use active track. So I did find that this was a little bit fiddly. It wasn't the best location for me to test this out as there's obviously a lot of trees. It's a low light setting. The weather was terrible and I had to actually fly up relatively high to avoid the tree line. So I found that it was a little bit hit and miss with that active track mode. Also the drone seemed to automatically track me from behind. So you don't have the option to choose directional tracking like you can with the Mavic 3, but I found that it defaulted to just following me from behind. Even if I started it off to the side or in front of me, when I was setting up just the normal active track mode, it seemed to follow me from behind. So I don't know what that's about. I'm sure it'll be ironed out and fixed and improved as we go on, but it makes more sense to me that if you're following, if you're using the active track from a specific direction, then that's going to be the direction that the drone follows you from. But again, it just seems to follow me from behind. When you enable active track, you have two different options here. You have trace and you have parallel. Now trace is the one that I'm referring to when the drone seems to come from behind. Normally this works fantastic fantastically well, but I found that a few times it lost me when I went through the tree line. I also found that again, because I was so close to trees, I would try to, you know, launch the drone up higher and then it would lose that tracking point. So it wasn't a hundred percent consistent here with that tracing mode. I found that straight when I switched it over to parallel, so then it's obviously tracking me off to the side on a parallel path that actually seemed to work really well. And it was perfect for this environment that I was in because when I had the drone in the middle of the field there, it just followed me in a nice open 
open space. So it didn't have to fly around the tree line and I wasn't as nervous about the drone, you know, coming into an awkward spot. So I found that parallel worked perfectly in this scenario. And I will test the tracing mode again when I have more of an open field and more of a kind of a controlled environment. Tracing does work. And I had periods there where I could actually use the active track through the tracing mode and it was working perfectly fine. But I found that it was more consistent, especially in this environment when I was using that parallel active track mode. The overall footage from the active track mode, like the smoothness of the video was great. I didn't find the drone to do any weird movements. It didn't seem to be too jerky or awkward. It definitely did a great job both in the tracing mode and the parallel mode of the active track. Again, like the tracing mode wasn't the most impressive experience for me, but when I did have moments, I kind of had glimpses of what it was capable of doing. I found it to be mostly good in those situations. The footage itself though was great. You know, the fact that it's an inbuilt active track mode as opposed to those third party apps that I've been testing in the past, it just works as you would expect it to. The footage looks great and it definitely does give you a unique perspective. I even tested right at the end of the video actually, I jumped off the bike because I wanted to see, you know, if it's going to go from me being on a bike to then me jumping off a bike, is it going to stop the functionality? You know, does it recognize it as a bike or does it recognize me as a person? So I actually tested that. I jumped off the bike and amazingly enough, it just continued to follow me. So that was really cool. Like if you're doing some sort of interesting, I guess, training, let's say, where you're going from a bike to running, like you're doing some sort of triathlon or something, the fact that it can continue tracking you in those different environments where I can jump off a bike and then I can just start jogging. That was actually really unique. For some reason, I thought it was going to stop because it was tracking the bike, but it seemed to be tracking me as the person on the bike. So that was really cool. Good that it was flexible enough that it can just figure it out and continue tracking me. Moving on to the point of interest. Now this is a really cool tracking feature again. And what it allows you to do is basically just circle a point of interest. So you have the option of which direction you want the drone to fly in and also what speed you want it to fly in. So here um, I was relatively close to houses so I didn't actually want to fly on the other side. So I only just did kind of like a semicircle here but I found that it worked really well. Again, smoothness of footage was great there. It did seem to lose like the actual tracking point but the thing that's really cool about active track now is even if it loses the subject it will just place a pin there it will basically go oh well that's where the person was so i'm just going to place a pin there and continue with the maneuver so it didn't stop the actual maneuver it didn't stop the point of interest at all it just continued it which is really nice and that was actually the same with the active track test and the spotlight test. When I did all of those, it would lose me at certain points and it wouldn't recognize me as a person anymore, but it would just place a pin where it thought I was and it would continue the maneuver. You didn't have to worry about any abrupt stoppages or any awkward movements, which again is really nice to see the advancement in the focus track mode that DJI have created here. Looking back over the footage, I noticed that there was a glimpse of that active track tracing mode working as I expected it to. So it was just that short clip over the bridge Bridge there. So I had the drone in front of me. I set up the active track tracing mode and then it actually followed me from the front. It didn't go to the back here and it did a very good job of creating a unique perspective as I'm riding over the bridge. Again, I was quite nervous because straight when I flew to a certain height, like it was 35 meters, 40 meters, it just seemed to struggle to keep tracking me. So I had to kind of keep it in that 20 to 25 meter height point and that's where it seemed to be fine for the active track. But again, a lot of trees around and it just was a bit of an awkward test. So I was wasn't able to fully test the functionality of it here. So it did work as I expected it to, but again, I will be doing some more thorough tests in future videos. So overall for a drone that's under 250 grams that can track you and has three different tracking options and to be able to have that obstacle avoidance and to be able to do it flawlessly without any issues or any interruptions, you know, it's great. The offering is there. It's exactly what we were looking for in a mini drone from DJI. And I'm very impressed. The active track is exactly what you would expect. The spotlight worked great. Point of interest worked great. Overall, a really impressive test here. And I'm very excited. You know, this hopefully will give you a chance to see like what a real world test would look like if you are to be riding your bike in a park or if you're to jump off your bike and go for a walk or a jog, whatever that may be. Hopefully this gives you an idea of what is possible and how reliable the focus tracking modes are on the DJI Mini 3 Pro. So thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you in the next video and peace out. I wanna know, wanna see it Can I feel your crib tonight? Can't get this off my mind Does it own your control here? Let me in, I'll help you out